Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Cold Hard Truth NFL podcast. I'm your host, Anish Gupta. And I'm your host, Shrikar Rajendran. As you can tell, my voice probably sounds completely different. Shriek's saying it's not. I, I think it does, like just like based on how I'm talking. But yeah, a couple, couple theories on what happened. Uh, I lost my voice from the Browns game uh, or a sore throat is looming. Um, so I'm just going to say it's both. Um, but yeah, obviously, both of us had good football weekends. Shriek kind of better from Thursday and then me from Sunday. But uh, let's just jump right into it, dude. We're we're recap. We're going back to back to back. See, see when the season's there, we're there. So yeah, we're um, it's so kind of just good. like we have we have a formula now, and we're yeah, just sticking exactly. to it. Yeah. So a team that maybe you know had a sort of good week, but not really. Uh, Cincinnati Bengals beat the Rams on Monday. I wanted to recap it really quick. Uh, that yeah, they beat the Rams by three. Um, I know Shriek probably kind of wanted to go quick on this, so I'll let you kind of just start any takeaways. Because I, I wanted to say something about them because we haven't really talked about them the first couple of weeks in a specific segment. Yeah, I honestly, not too many takeaways from last night's game. I caught bits and pieces of it. I was doing some work, but uh, when I watched the highlights this morning, um, T. Higgins definitely has a drop prob- had a had a drop problem in that game. I don't think that's going to persist. Just like with the Bengals and their play, I think they're going to be back sooner rather than later. I think they really started to come alive in last night's game, if only for like spurts at a time. It wasn't really something that was consistent throughout the whole game. I still worry a little bit about Joe Burrow and that calf. Obviously, this was like a training camp injury, but there's kind of just been re-aggravations early on in the season. I just wonder how it's going to hold up, especially with his O-line just being complete like horrid like it's just not good so yeah with the Bengals it's just you know I expect them to get back on track sooner rather than later and last night we you know kind of got a glimpse at like the Bengals that we all know and love so overall that's kind of just what I thought of the game so I disagree with you I I am worried and uh I'll tell you why like so the O-line, yes, it's it's bad for everyone except Orlando Brown. Like Orlando Brown, from every advanced stat, he hasn't allowed a sack yet. He's been phenomenal. Everyone else on the line has been bad. Yeah. For for Cincinnati, like to win that, they first of all, like watching that game, I think even Cincy fans agreed they should not have won that game. I think like the Rams being just terrible in the red zone and third down is the reason, right? Like two for twelve, or sorry, like one for eleven, and like the the touchdown to Higby that got saved by a timeout, right? A lot of a lot of wish washy things. Obviously, they got the win, right? Kudos to them. But I wouldn't be impressed with that at all. And then for Joe Burrow, I, look, I am concerned because his calf is just, it's not going to get better over the year. Like, th- this is what happens in the NFL. You don't just magically heal, right? When you have to keep playing games, like everything is going to be worse that you came in with, right? That's why obviously this off season is so long, right? Like six months for you to actually really grind and get yourself ready for week one, because, you know, you're going to take some hits, you're going to take some bits and pieces, you know, off your 100% health capacity. And for Cincinnati, it's like, his calf is, you know, it's it's going to be a lingering injury. And, you know, there are things that could be led from that, right? I've heard stuff with like the Achilles, right? Rogers had a calf strain, what happened, right? I, I'm not going to say it's po- like, it's a possibility, though. And then also with him having limited mobility, guys maybe toppling over him, collarbone, rotator cuff, labrum right all these things are possible now um or a little at least a little bit more worrisome but that's Uh, that's always possible though that's not something that's just there but but someone like joe has a little bit of that mobility to kind of get out of it this at least is an increased chance and that's obviously something that you just have to deal with with cincinnati because you just can't you can't rest him now right you're one and two like that's still to be concerned in an afc that's as stacked as this right and then Um, because I honestly do think like they still haven't pushed the ball downfield. He's thrown like maybe two passes past 15 yards in the entirety of, or I think he's completed two passes past 15 yards the entire season. Right. Like, like that's just not the Cincinnati that we're used to seeing. Right. Um, and it's bad because like, this is their defense single-handedly won him this game. Right. Like I think they got like five sacks. Yeah. Their Uh, pass rush was crazy. It was was really good. And, uh, it's going to continue to be right. Like this is the best roster, I think around Joe Burrow since he's entered the league. The problem is your star power is just not 100%. And I think that's why I'm a little worried in the sense that like your schedule is only going to get harder. You still haven't played any of the first place teams that you're supposed to face, right? Like, like this is a team that again, has to be on a week to week basis, lingering questions about Joe Burrow's health. 
and that still hasn't been solved. And that's why I'm a little skeptical on a team that, you know, was honestly co-favorites to rep, you know, to win the Super Bowl, right. Coming in. So that's kind of my touch on the Bengals. Um, but <clears throat> I mean, I, I'm not going to go out on a limb and say, you know, they're for sure out, but you know, everyone else in the AFC North has looked good. I think that everyone at their best has looked much better than Cincinnati has. So um, that's the where thing the is, I don't think we've seen Cincinnati at their best yet. That's the, that's the problem. You think we will? Yeah, you think I think I think eventually we will. I I'm a little scared. I don't know. You think this I, team I is in midseason form right now? A little bit. I think I think the questions of their offense is going to stay. Like I think their defense is going to. It's just great. Like I think this is a top ten unit. Like no doubt. But yeah, their offense. I think they're going to continue to have these same type of questions. I mean, like they still they're running the ball has been very inconsistent. I mean, they were finally able to get it going at the end of the. Uh, towards the fourth quarter, but haven't seen much. And yeah, three weeks is a decent sample size, but you're right. There's still 14 games to go. Yeah. Uh, another team that does need to be taken seriously, though. Miami <laughs> Dolphins smacked Denver, dude, 70 to 20. I personally think they should have gone for the record, um, but, you know, they didn't, whatever. But yeah, it was like 70 to 20 with eight minutes left. Uh, and yeah, I watched the, or that was the one game I actually was able to watch. I was on the road uh, during Sunday, but holy crap dude <laughs> i mean like it was just it was just it was funny because every missed mishap that the broncos had it wasn't even that much it was like okay it was maybe two it was th- i believe it was three turnovers or two turnovers the two fumbles by sutton right but it was just how quick they took advantage of it right it was like maybe like a two plays after they were they were in the end zone right and yeah everything was clicking for them um yeah they gave up a couple big plays on defense but big deal right like i mean you outscore them 70 to 20 your running backs had like 350 yards. Your, I think you had 350 yards passing, 700 and like 26 yards total. I mean, this is like a team that obviously we won't expect this every week, but we have now seen a good sample size of this Dolph- Dolphins offense being so effective. And this is also without Jalen Waddle, um, dude. I think, I mean, I, I've been saying this since even last year, right? The Dolphins have been a team I've always liked. I think their personnel group and what they have been building is phenomenal right and i think an even better part about this season which was why i was so high is because they all their road games and their home games like their scheduling is very favorable to them they get a lot of their home games late in the year where it's in miami where they don't have to go like they have to go at buffalo next week you'd much rather go at buffalo in october rather than freaking snowy ass december right yeah so i think i think the Finns really need to be taken seriously in that regard in terms of just the regular season but maybe you can i'll transition it over to you in this question do you think this is sustainable i mean are they are they really you know should they be number one in everyone's power rankings because they are right now um i'll address the whole power oh i'll address the power rankings thing right now. i still think the niners should be one um just because i feel like they're the more complete team right now but I don't want I don't want to you know start this off with a bad Dolphins take. I I need to be positive cuz 70 freaking points. Like 70. We we rarely get like 40 to like 50 point games. 70 is just unheard of. So they're automatically just the biggest winners of the week for me. Again, playmakers everywhere. They didn't even have Waddle. Tyreek, he's playing like an offensive player of the year MVP type player. Tua's playing like an MVP. Moster too. I think Mostert's going out there improving. He's he's not just a speed back. He's also, you know, shows a lot of physicality too. A lot of people kind of look at Raheem Mostert and think, yeah, he's just speed. He can't really beat you in other ways. He he really can. I'm just praying. I am praying this group stays healthy because I don't want this to be the same old story for the Dolphins where injuries just derail what is a truly elite offense. I think that a healthy Dolphins team can win the Super Bowl. Like they literally can. Um Another thing I wrote down was just elite speed, elite rhythm, just this offense as a whole. Uh, Devon A. Chain, I forgot, I forgot to, or A. Chan, I don't know how he wants to go by now, but Devon A. Chan, I think that's how he wants it. I forgot to mention him. It's very tough to game plan when him and Mostert are on the field at the same time because A. Chan is so versatile. Like he can make plays in the receiving game too. Um, and yeah, I mentioned elite rhythm for a reason. I never, I've never gone on this pod and talked about rhythm but uh i mean this offense is just so like free flowing it's smooth definitely feel like it's a bigger playbook than last year mike mcdaniel is taking a lot more risks um 
and the execution has just been phenomenal. It's as if they've been running this play, like this whole playbook for like a decade. Like everyone is just in sync. Like, I don't think I've seen an offense this good, like making things look this easy three weeks into the season, probably ever. Like, and I'll flip over to the defensive side. The defense is stepping up when they need to. Um, I still need to see a bit more on that more consistently, just more explosive plays, but Look, this Sunday, you got a big test against the Bills. We're going to be going over it in picks. I'll reiterate this. I think Tua, Mostert, and Tyreek, I think they're all in the MVP race right now, which is kind of crazy to say. I think it's pretty bold. Yeah. I think all three of them have a claim to MVP right now. Uh, I would definitely not put Mostert in there. I would heavily disagree with you on that. But I will say this. Yeah, McDaniel... 100% is my coach of the year right now. And what he's been able to do with just all his pre-snap motion, and I'll tell you why it looks so in sync in Rhythm Shriek. Yeah, it's it's their second year in the offense, and they've returned basically 10 out of 11, right? I think Gusecki's the only one that's not there, right? And you can see, as you were saying, right, how in sync they move, how they pick up their blockers, how they find work super easily. That's what happens when an NFL offense stays with each other and they trust in it, right? Like, it takes time to build it with other people, right? These are like other people with their own lives, right? Like, chemistry is a real thing in the league. And yeah, Tua's looked really good. He was 16 to 16 for the first half, right? Like, Tyreek, again, I, I've been on this train. I think he's been the best receiver in the league for almost two and a half, three years now. Um, and he kind of showed it again this, this, this week. I mean, like, they're just so effective at what they do. And uh, yeah, the defense, I'm worried about the back end. I think the pass rush has been getting there. Their linebackers get to the ball. The back end has been a little bit concerning. Uh, hopefully Jalen Ramsey fills that in later, but uh, obviously they still have to play some games before December. Um, but yeah, I think for me, I, I, I kind of agree. I'm on the fence. I really am. I think it's 50-50 between the, them and SF. And I think what's carrying, honestly, my head is telling me SF, but my heart and my McDaniel bias is putting the Dolphins right there. Um, but sure. honestly, I'll, I'd probably lean uh, SF. Um, I think we can move on. You, anything else to talk about the Fins there? I think not. Nah, okay. The, y'all might think I'm crazy for the Mostert thing, but if we literally just look at his last two games, like, okay. And okay, the, no, the Chargers, I, Chargers game wasn't that great, but New England, 121 yards on the ground, two touchdowns. And then obviously the explosion he had in this sure, game. But he, I, like, think, I think there's a claim. A lot from the ski, like, like also you saw, you know, a chain go for 200 plus, right. On like 18 carries. It's just like, like it's, you're benefiting a lot from an outside zone scheme that like has speed on it. Right. I, I, I don't right, think but if you're capitalizing, I don't, I don't think the scheme is an issue. And like the guy, the running backs who've won MVP, like Sean Alexander, Adrian Peterson. It was oh, no, no, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying he's going to win it, but I'm, I'm saying he has like a claim to it. I, I'm, I'm going to disagree there, but we can move on. Um, I can't believe this is, this is a topic. I, I should have known as soon as I predicted it. I, I don't know what it is. I, I think I just need to stop. Right. Um, and the, the topic is obviously about Trevor Lawrence and like, did, did I, did the goop curse happen again? Did it, did it really somehow get to T-Law? I mean, I, I obviously I claim the same thing I did with Karsten Wentz, which is what happened. So I, I, all our loyal viewers, I'll just rehash it real quick. Carson Wentz was doing great. Then I started vocalizing my love for him like every week. And then this brother became a huge what if. And now Trevor Lawrence, who I think I've probably couldn't go a single episode without (laughs) blabbering about, (laughs) is now one and two, uh, has looked shaky the last couple weeks, especially this past week. Did Shriek start? Did I somehow curse another quarterback? Should we be scared? You know what? I'm I'm really courteous. Like I think I'm I'm a gentleman here. So what I'm gonna do right now, I am not gonna talk about Trevor Lawrence at all. I'm I'm gonna defer all the Trevor talk to you. I'm gonna talk <laughs> about everything else in that game. I think overall the Jaguars are just just super inconsistent, really sloppy. Like one play will be elite. The next play will be absolutely terrible. Like they're looking like a, you know, a top 10 draft pick sort of team. It's just inconsistent everywhere. Uh, The passing game, the play calling, the run game, um, the pass rush was absolutely horrendous in this game against Houston. I mean, that Texans O-line was so beat up. Like you got to sack the damn quarterback or at least get (laughs) to him, right? Like, and it's just so disappointing because again, 
this team was supposed to be a contender. That being said, they they did the same thing last year, so history could repeat itself. But as of right now, like I just don't think it's looking good at all for a team as hyped as this one. It's just way too much inconsistency and sloppy play. That's literally what it is. Yeah, I'll I'll touch on that too. Like we've seen teams like the Texans and the Colts in this division look better coached and more in sync than a Jags team that again returned a lot of the same people, right? Coaching wise, I've been all in on Dougie P, right? Like defense, I've really liked their back end. Um, but yeah, that pass rush is a problem. You're right. I mean, it was always kind of their their weak spot and you know, they just don't really have guys that they're not, they don't have household names on that line, that D line anyway, but come on, right? Like it's, you still got to get home. I mean, Trayvon Rocker was the first overall pick and it's like, we're just not really seeing much of him. And yeah, I, I think, I don't even know if they got a single sack all game. Like I, like they were just, they were just non-existent, right? Yeah. Um, But yeah, let me touch on Trav. Like, it, it's just like, it's, it's, it's so wild to me, right? Like he's, I really, and I still genuinely believe this. I don't think there is a flaw in his game. Like, I don't think there's a big thing where I'm like, he needs to improve this. I think like, really, he has everything down. It's just, it's just, I think the inconsistency, like that's where it's coming down. Like, and like, I mean, the last week, right? If a couple feet were down, they beat the Chiefs, right? Like it's, but I'm tired of saying, okay, what if, right? Like yeah. They keep putting themselves in these situations, but they flat out got outplayed here in Houston, right? So I don't think that this is like, this is kind of the biggest indicator on Trev, but it's like, dude, we got to step it up here, right? I mean, this is like personnel group. This is a really good football team. And the Jags really don't have that much time to do it because they were the first place team last year. So they still got to play some other juggernauts, right? And, you know, with that big kind of expectation uh, crown on them, they got to kind of uphold, uphold that because the AFC South is still weak. Like it's still got inconsistency all over the board. Yeah. Like as much as, as well as the Colts and the Texans have looked, we've also seen them both look horrendous this season. So got to find it. Right. And um, there's very little time to do it, but the Trevor Lawrence MVP take is not looking good. Shocker. <laughs> yeah. Again, you bring up the AFC South, like last year, the only reason they were able to make that run and get to the playoffs and do what they did in the playoffs was because one Tennessee was banged up, right? Like they're literally trotting out Josh Dobbs out there in week 18. Like that division was bad. So if history was going to repeat itself, this would be the year because the AFC South is in pretty much the exact same shape. Like the Jaguars could still take the division, but it would just take them doing what they did last year and going on a massive run. So are you not fearful of the two and one Colts? Like you're not you don't think they're no 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 I think they're a good team but I I, you know if the Jaguars go on a run at that point I'm going to be taking the Jaguars over the Colts I think they're yeah I think their upside is just too high like and but the Colts have looked like see like these two are scrappy the the Colts and the Texans specifically Mm -hmm. um so you know they're not easy out so it's kind of what I, I was saying to begin the year anyway but Let's uh, let's kind of round it out with we were talking a lot of AFC. Let's go to the NFC real quick. Obviously, we're going to probably touch on this game, the Cowboys and the Cardinals. I mean, I know Shriek's a little bit happy because I'm sure the Cowboys love was getting too much, right? They're not better than the Niners. Oh, no, I was the one pushing this whole Cowboys thing. Niners, they can't be better than Niners. And yeah, 16 to 28 defense got gassed, like over 200 yards rushing allowed. This was deemed the doomsday defense, like best defense in the league. I think I think the Browns may have something to say about that, but but we'll leave them for later. Um, I think the Niners have something to say about both of those teams. Okay, um, I'll let you start. How much trouble are the Cowboys in? Um, well, first of all, I think the Cardinals completely just outplayed them, like on all levels. Like this did not look like the Cowboys from the first couple weeks. I kind of just chalked this up to losing Trayvon Diggs in the middle of the week, but. I mean, still, it's just, it's a bad loss. That's no excuse. Uh, but man, I mean, this, this defense really needs digs. Like losing him changed the complexion of the entire unit to me. I think they'll miss digs a ton. I still think this is a good team. One loss in week three, like doesn't decide that for me. Um, so I still think they're good. But is this the year where the Cowboys get over the hump? I was kind of pushing it before the season that I think this is the year that they would get over the hump. And 
now when you lose Trayvon, Trayvon Diggs, I don't think that's going to happen anymore. Like, I just don't think, you know, they can even get to the NFC championship anymore. Like it, it, they could, but would I bet on it happening still? No, I, I don't think so. So still a good team, just not, not a great one anymore. I'm with you there. I was on, I was on that as well. Like I, I really thought this team could finally get past the, the divisional round and, you know, even take Philly for the division, but you're right. Cause once Trayvon went down, they had to put Deron Bland on the outside. They had to completely switch how they run their corners and it kind of got exposed, right? Yeah. Like it got exposed over the middle. It got exposed over the sideline, no matter what covers they were in Cardinals were able to exploit it with a multitude of different things. Right. And like, guy, you know, their speed guys like Rondell Moore was able to get through the secondary Hollywood Brown was kind of getting open. Josh Dobbs was making plays with his legs. That's not something a defense as stout as the Cowboys are supposed to be. You know, that's not what we should bank on. Right. Right. And their offense, one touchdown. I mean, honestly, I don't think their offense has really been impressive all year. Like even in the Giants game. Right. Fine. Because they haven't been asked to do much. Right. But this was the game they were and they couldn't. Right. And against the Cardinals defense that gave up literally in like a historic second half against the Giants. Right. Like. So this just happened, right? And you can't do that. That's a little concerning. And for a team that has those type of expectations, as you mentioned, Shriek, yeah, it, I, it really sucks. But I think this will go down as a what if season. Like, I, I think this could, or it's looking like that, right? Like, yeah, I mean, because, yeah, with Trayvon Diggs being there, Trayvon Diggs to me is one of the seven best corners in football, right? And you you lose him like that, it it's hard. It's super hard, especially in practice where you – you just can't really game plan for that, right? Like there are season ending injuries where like you have some time in the off season to kind of prepare for, but I mean, this one is just a terrible blow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For the Cowboys who, you know, their schedule isn't all that crazy. Right. And no one's saying they won't make the playoffs or anything, but now, you know, that's never been their question. Question is how, how far can we go? Right. This is a team that's won 12 games, uh, two seasons in a row, right. Made the playoffs like three of the last four years. So that's never been an issue, but I think they're kind of back in that same tier as they were, right? Just outside of that, you know, top two to three teams in the NFC, which yeah, definitely hurts. No, it's very unfortunate. Um, but honestly, like, yeah, it, it, it was just a problem because you have Bland on the outside, Gilmore's on the outside, no Igbenogany is getting more stri uh, snaps, Mukuamu's getting more snaps. It's just, yeah, as you said, that injury happening in the middle of the week, I believe that genuinely, like, Threw the Cowboys off, and I think that again, yeah, as you said, that's just something you can't plan for. It's unfortunate. One hundred percent. You ready for picks? Move yes, I am. Yeah, I am. All right, All right. let's do it. It All is right. our favorite segment. You know what it is. Let's free cook it up. Give us the rundown. Yeah. So, um, Goop took the lead. Uh, he he's up by one. Him and fans won the week. Um, it's still pretty much anyone's anyone's game really the fans made a big comeback going 12 and 4 this week so now i'm only two games up on fans you're three games up and uh yeah we're, we're, we're would, have, would have been an extra one i would have been 13 and 3 had i not picked the rams last minute i yeah. believe sean mcveigh and if it wasn't for that stupid higby touchdown getting called back since he would have been 0 and 3 Oh well, that's hot. Uh, yeah, Washington and Mini, you guys sold me, um, but I don't, <laughs> I don't hold any grudges, so that's good. All right, let's go to Thursday night football: Detroit and Green Bay. Uh, I think this is shaping up to be one of the best games of the week in my mind. The Packers closed out last season with a horrible taste in their mouths, thanks to the Lions. The Lions have proven over the last couple of seasons they're capable of winning games in a variety of different ways. But this year's version of the Packers is led by Jordan Love, and he helped his team to a shocking comeback over the Saints this past week. Um, the Packers have one of the best defensive fronts in the NFL this season, and Rashawn Gary, uh, the star of that group, I mean, he was he was a man possessed, right? Like, he went crazy. This game feels like a true toss-up to me, honestly, and Vegas seems to agree with that. The Lions are one-and-a-half-point favorites right now. Wow, really? Uh, yeah. I think that's with it being Green Bay too. So that's actually a four and a half point swing. Yep. Wow. Okay. I'm I'm gonna take the Packers. They're at home. 
I think they're going to want revenge. But this, I feel like they're going to win by like on a, like a last second field goal or something like that. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the Packers kind of lucked out, right? Because Saints missed the field goal at the end, so technically shouldn't have won. But yeah, I'll I'll spoil. I'm giving. I'm taking Detroit here. I think this is a team that's figured it out. Like the old Detroit would never go in Green Bay and win this. I think this is a Detroit team that's kind of figured things out. Looks a lot better, a lot cleaner. Defense has looked a lot, re- looked really good against Atlanta. So give me Detroit here to win this one. Okay, so already some difference. Um, that was just Thursday night football. Moving on to Sunday. The Jaguars are arguably the biggest disappointment in the NFL so far this season, losing at home to the Texans in relatively impressive fashion for Houston was unacceptable. This team is now one and two facing a very underrated Falcons offense here in front of the London crowd is going to be an early one. We got Falcons at Jaguars technically. Man. Um, also, yeah. Sorry, guys. I know my voice is just, <laughs> it's like, it's on its last legs, which honestly, it's kind of like Jacksonville. If they go one and three here, it'll be a little scary. Um, I don't think I've picked against Jacksonville all year. <laughs> so uh, it's not stopping now. So <laughs> give me, give me the Jags to beat the Falcons. The Falcons offense kind of got exposed a little bit, right? Like, they just weren't effective. And I think I, I wasn't even thinking that was just on Ritter. It's like, if you can contain Bijan, right. And if you can get to that O line, you can really get to the, get to the Falcons. So give me the Jags to bounce back here. Cause if they don't win this, man, I, I'm just never going to like a quarterback again, like ever. I think it's like done for me. So. Yeah. The Falcons um, fresh off a of loss themselves, but it was on the road against a very good Lions team. I mean, the Falcons have been a pleasant surprise so far this season for a lot of people. You know, you win two of your first three games. You look like you might be legit contenders for the NFC South this year. But yeah, you're going to need a big bounce back on the road, technically, against a team that is going to be hungry to get out of a funk, right? I think the Jaguars are going to finally find a way to put things together at some point. But are they going to be able to stop the Falcons offensive attack. I don't know. Um, I think it might take the Jaguars every second of this game to pull this win out. But yeah, I'll, I'll also go Jacksonville here. Uh, I just think it's, an, and it's another game that's going to come down to the wire. Um, and another game that's going to come down to the wire, Dolphins at Bills. I think this is um, this is shaping up to be one of the best games of the week. It's too bad the NFL won't be able to flex this game and put it in a prime time because, I mean, this game certainly deserves it over what Jets Chiefs like. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> the Bills. I talked about the Dolphins. The Bills have seemingly overcome uh, their game in Week One against the Jets and how bad that looked, and now look like the contender everyone expected them to be in the AFC once again this season. Can Miami keep up? You know that that offensive output which has been red hot against Buffalo this week. I'd feel dumb if I bet against that, to be honest. I mean, you put up nearly 730 yards of offense against the Broncos and even 50% of that offensive output against Denver would be enough to win most games. The bills are somehow three and a half point favorites in this one, but I mean, they're playing at home. So that makes some sense. I'm not going to disrespect the Dolphins after what we just saw, though. I, I'll go down with that ship. I'm going to pick Miami here. This one's really tough because um, you're like, they're on such a high right now, right? Like the Dolphins are on like, dude, we just dropped 70, bro, right? Like we're on top of the world, right? And like for Buffalo, I think people still have that sour taste of the Jets game in their mouth because that was on prime time, right? The other two weeks were just, normal 10 o'clock games where they just kind of handled their business, right? Like it wasn't anything crazy. I'm sure a lot of people just kind of watched it on red zone unless they were fans of the respective teams. So really Miami has been kind of in the spotlight while Buffalo hasn't, which is kind of funny, right? Like you would think it would be the other way around. So if anything, I think this is actually, this is why it's a sneaky Buffalo minus three and a half. I think that's like, I think that spread is giving some tells there, right? Like I, I think that, and obviously but here's the thing, like barring injury, like Miami's always played Buffalo really tough. They played them tough with Skylar Thompson last year in the playoffs. It was 37, 34, right? It was 29 to 32 with Tua at Buffalo in like December after the concussion. Miami always plays Buffalo tough. 
and I think it's really close. I, I would, I think I'm, I'm, I might end up switching this like more than likely, but for now, give me Miami. That spread is really sneaky. Like that, that minus three and a half, right? Because you, you just said it, right? Why the hell is Miami not getting a couple points there? Because minus three for the home team, right? Yeah. Why the hell are they not? But I also did mention to you earlier, like this is the best time to play Buffalo at Buffalo, right? You don't want to play them in January or like December, right? You want to play them now when it's still like possibility of like 60 to 70 degree weather. But pencil in Miami for now, Shriek, but I think that's spread. I'm going to keep, it, keep an eye on it, maybe change it. Well, if this isn't going to be the worst game of the slate, <laughs> I don't know what is. Or maybe, or maybe ironically, it'll end up being one of the best games. <laughs> it's Broncos at Bears. All I know is... This is a game that'll be played between two teams with absolutely furious and fed up fan bases. Yeah. Tell me who you got, Goop. Dude, it's so funny. The amount of memes I've seen for this game have just been killing me. Like, it's so funny. Like, like, like these fan bases have absolutely no hope. Um, it, it's sad because it's so funny because, okay. I think Denver has at least played well. Like they've had some stretches where they've played well. Chicago hasn't had any of that dude, like, like at all. So it's, it's so funny, like, and, but the thing is, if you were to just look at this matchup from a schematic and a, and a personnel perspective, Chicago matches up so well with Denver, but it's the bears. Like, that's the problem. Like, like, see, if this was like, if this was any other team with the exact same personnel, I would probably pick them. I mean, cause dude, they match up so well with Denver's defense. Like, I actually really think that. But dude, like it, it, I, I don't think I, I haven't picked Denver in a single. Oh no, I did pick them against Washington. Yeah, stupid ass Washington. Whatever. I will pick Denver here. I, I think they do. This is a game they gotta get right. Like if they don't, dude, like this is your gimme, honestly. Like I mean, yeah. and then for, I think it's for both. Like for Chicago, this is going to be probably the worst defense you've played all year by far, right? Yeah. And if any, if it's any game that's gonna get Justin Fields right, it has to be this one. So it's both ways for both teams, but it's going to be so funny because it's not going to go right for one of them, right? But the memes have been saying it's not going to go right for both of them, and the game's going to end in like a 0-0 tie, which has been funny to me. Someone said that Justin Fields was going to throw six touchdowns in this game, and the score was going to be 21-21, to and I started dying at that. I thought that was so funny. Um, but yeah, give me Denver. Yeah, you look at the Broncos 0-3 record, and I think a lot of people want to blame Russell Wilson, but... He's not to blame this season. The Denver defense is to blame. It's not even close. For Chicago, Justin Fields is receiving a ton of criticism as well. But the receivers that aren't getting open and the Chicago defense, I think they also deserve equal blame there as well. And the play calling. Holy play calling's crap. horrible too. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think these are two franchises that could be in store for much more change in the near future than any of their fans really want to deal with. Uh, but yeah, I, I agree with your reasoning. Just give me Denver and we'll move on. All right. Ravens at Browns, two AFC North teams battling for the chance to get to the playoffs this year. I mean, this is going to be an intense game in the early window. Um, I wanted to talk a bit about the Browns this episode because I, you know, I've been on this team's bandwagon for like <laughs> half the off season. And I feel like they're one of the most underrated squads in the entire AFC right now, but I'll let you start because you're the Browns fan. No, no, no. You can take it. I'll, cause I'm gonna take my time with this. I, I don't have much of a voice, but I will expend it on this. You go ahead. I'll let okay. you go. I'll, I won't steal your thunder on what you want to say with the Browns. So, I'll just say this. We'll, we'll, we'll see their championship medal put to the test early. Um, this is a huge matchup, right? The Ravens lost a tough one against the Colts. Honestly, that had to be one of the top three like weirdest losses of the week like how how in the world did that happen like <laughs> ravens lost the turnover battle 02 and lost the game by three points and like it's just the ravens they just don't seem to have a huge margin for error even against teams like the colts who have to trot out what gardner Minshew as their starting qb i like the browns at home here give me cleveland so yeah um this is exa- like this is going to be remember i told you i've been telling you this for so long these, that four game stretch we played, right? Yeah. This will determine the season, right? So if if we were like, you know, if we were one and three, I think the playoffs was already out. But if we're three and one, which is what I thought we could be, this is a lot. I'm a lot excited. And obviously, this is the game that could really put us there. 
I feel like this is a game that, you know, the standard Cleveland Browns will lose, right? Like, you know, you're supposed to win it. It's at home, Baltimore. So if they do lose it, right, I'm just going to cry and be like, yeah, dude, this is not a playoff team. But if they win this one, if they win this, if they finally win this game that they're like, you know, they really should win, they actually do it, right? It's kind of like 2020 vibes when we beat the Cowboys. Remember that? Like week four, we actually like yeah. did it, right? We went to three and one because we've been two and one the last four years, by the way. That's pretty impressive, right? For a Browns team. Every last year, two and one, finished seven and ten. Two and one, eight and nine. The year before, we won the fourth game and we went eleven and five. I'm telling you, this is it. This is a huge game. I'm not even kidding. Like, this is so big. Um, yeah, defense, by the way, you know, statistically, yards allowed, points allowed, and uh third down conversion. Yeah, right? they're insane. That's they're defense. Insane. It's the best defense this century. That's oh, included. Century? Dude, look it up. It's including the Legion of Boom. It's including the no-fly zone. And it's including the 2000 Ravens. This has been the best team. This Dude, 490 yards in three games. Yeah. Bro, the Dolphins put up double than that in one game. And they've only given up one. Or sorry, 490 in three. Like, this defense is really good. One touchdown all year. Yeah. Uh, give me Cleveland and win this one. If they do it, if they really do it, I'm telling you guys, like, I will finally have true hope as a Browns fan. But if they don't, then it's back to it's back to mediocrity. We'll probably go 8-9 and nine or like 9-8 and eight or something. All right, Bengals at Titans. The Titans are going to be a tough team to figure out all season long because I think their offense is going to be just so erratic. There will be games where we see Derrick Henry and that running game takeover, and we'll see big plays from Traylon Burks and Chikokonkwo, but then there's going to be games like we saw on Sunday against the Browns where the Titans only <laughs> score three points. Um, this team is just, I mean, this team is just going to look like a JV squad out there. And you could kind of see that coming from a mile away with the talent they've assembled on the offensive side of the ball. It's just not good right now, but the Titans are playing at home and the status of Joe Burrow is an obvious question mark for the Bengals. We kind of touched on it. He went down in training camp with a serious calf injury, and we've seen the lingering effects of that early into the regular season here, but the Bengals gutted out a tough win against the Rams. They'll have to gut out another tough one because this Titans team is scrappy, right? But I think they can make it happen. We'll go with the Bengals here, but I, I, I think Tennessee can keep this close. You know, I haven't picked Cincy all year. Really? Uh, I didn't pick him against Cleveland. I didn't pick him against Baltimore. And then I changed it last minute to the Rams, remember? So yeah, yeah. I haven't picked him all year. This one, I think, is a lot easier than people think. I'm, give me Cincy for sure, and I'll tell you why. Like, te- the reason I picked Tennessee over L.A. was I thought I thought they matched up pretty well offensively against mm-hmm. the Chargers. Defense. They match up horribly <laughs> against Cincinnati. Like, horribly. I think if there's any old line that may be worse than the uh, Rams, it's theirs. Uh, Cincinnati's going to kill them, dude, like, on defense. Uh, I mean, it's all about their offensive, uh, you know, uh, personnel, but – on defense, they are going to annihilate Tennessee. And I feel so bad for Tannehill because a lot of it isn't on his fault. But yeah, Cincinnati here. And I don't think it's as close as you think. I, I think Cincinnati for sure. There were not many shockers as big as the Colts going on the road and beating the Ravens. <laughs> Historically speaking, like I'm not kidding. The Ravens are one of the best teams in the last like 20 years playing home games. And the Colts had to trot out their backup QB. Uh, and now you go up against a Rams team that has also looked better than many people expected early on this season, but unfortunately is still experiencing the effects of not having a star player like Cooper Cup out there in clutch moments. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to let you start on this. Who do you got? Uh, the battle of two coaches I really like. Obviously, I like one more than the other, so you can tell I'm kind of maybe leaning, maybe leaning L.A. I think, like, okay, look, it's so crazy because – Indianapolis did what like they outplayed Baltimore in crucial moments, right? Isn't that crazy? Right? Like you wouldn't think that. Um, I think Indianapolis's defense is a little bit worse than Cincy's, and I think uh, the Rams aren't as bad as we think. And I think they clean up stuff that uh, that happens or that kind of like um, like I think they will clean up the stuff that got them in this hole against Cincinnati. Give me the Rams for now. The Colts didn't have Anthony Richardson for their game against the Ravens, but they won anyway. They played turnover-free football and caused some mistakes from the Ravens. This will be the final week the Colts have to play without Jonathan Taylor if they can figure that out because he's eligible to come off the PUP in week five. So, I mean, 
I mean, this Rams team is relatively young overall, too. Like, one of the youngest rosters in the NFL. So, I think this matchup's really interesting when you look at the youth on both sides. And I'm I'm actually kind of digging this Colts team right now, especially if Anthony Richardson plays. Yeah, I, I think the Colts take this one at home. I'm I, I'm not going to lie here. Like, I, one. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I just have faith in them. All right, moving on here. Buccaneers at Saints. The Saints may be 2-1, but with Derek Carr in the uh, uh, quote-unquote week-to-week category after a shoulder injury uh, against the Packers, things could start going downhill rather quickly for this team. But I don't think that's going to happen in this game. I kind of like the Saints at home, even without Derek Carr if it comes to that. Um, Vegas seems to agree at this point with the Saints' as three-point favorites entering the week. For the Buccaneers, it was a tough loss to the Eagles. I mean, I mean, the Eagles, I'll touch on it a bit. They're basically sleepwalking through regular season wins at this point. Um, but anyways, the Bucs got two nice wins to open up the season. But, I mean, I, their luck kind of ran out in a way. If the Bucs can get this into a defensive battle, I think they have the types of weapons in the passing game to make more plays than the Saints. But that feels like a stretch. Like, I don't know if they're going to get into that scenario. I think the Saints especially given how much time they've spent with these other quarterbacks in place. You look at Jameis Winston, Taysom Hill, like they've spent a lot of time with them over the last handful of seasons. So I think they're a little better equipped in this game than the Bucks. So just because of that, I'm going to go with the Saints at home. Yeah, so you definitely want to monitor like a couple of injuries on the Tampa back end because, yeah, like the Saints haven't, let a, an opponent score more than 20 points in like the last like 20 games dude it's like some crazy stat like that like so that's what's always been pushing me to pick the saints but um yeah so tampa obviously kind of they didn't get rolled uh against philly but it was just a ma- matchup deficiency on the lines right like the offensive line and defensive line on both sides right so i i don't think it's as big of a mismatch against the saints so you're right if this turns into a defensive game i think i would trust tampa more i trust baker more than uh, Jameis or Taysom, whoever they roll out. This is really close. Like, I, th- I think this is actually the toughest matchup to pick. Um, wow. Okay. Really do. Um, I think, I, I think I'm going to roll with the Saints to bounce back, but man, I really like Tampa's such a sneaky good pick for this. W- what's the line, by the way? Uh, it was like Saint, it was Saints minus three. Oh, okay. So, no, so yeah, so it's even. It's perfectly even. Yeah. It's three on home team. Wow. Yeah. See, I, I think this is the toughest matchup. But yeah, I'll go Saints for now. But I, I really do think this one could also be something I could change. All right. Commanders at Eagles. After a few weeks of really exciting play, the Commanders' luck ran out against Buffalo. I picked them, and we won't talk about it. Now to bounce <laughs> back, the Commanders have to go on the road and take on the Eagles. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I, the Eagles, again, they just feel like they're able to sleepwalk to victories these yeah. days. And that's not to disrespect, you know, how good their wins are, how good the team is. But it just feels like they're so talented that they barely have to try these days. Jalen Hurts threw two picks, and the Eagles still won by 14 points. Like, this team just has so many ways to beat you, and they can overcome any mistakes in most games. So I'm going to take the Eagles at home. Pretty simple. So Jalen Hurts has won 20 of his last 21 starts. The one loss is to Washington at home. I'm not, it's not the Super Bowl. We're not including the the Super Bowl. So yeah, 20 of the last 21 regular season starts. This man's one loss has been to Washington on that Monday night game where Heineke slid and remember like they fouled him for the first down. Uh, I think this is Philly easily. And uh, I'll tell you why. You're right. They've been cakewalking. Really. I have not been impressed with them at all. And that's crazy because you know why they won last week? Their D-line, right? Like Jalen Carter was amazing. These, these dudes luck into the best player of the draft at the ninth pick. Are you kidding me? Like that that's like all I took away from the game against the best Tampa. player of the draft? I don't know about that. Oh, dude, yeah. Like I, overall, dude, this guy. I'd go Stroud. But that's that's a topic for another day. That's a topic for another day, sure. But dude, this dude Jalen Carter is literally leading the least pressures with uh, interior defenders. Like, bro, like, this dude is crazy. I think Philly is easily gonna win this game. All right, Vikings at Panthers. Another zero <laughs> three battle. Um, Someone's gotta win. Someone's there, gotta win. there, there are not more teams 
more disappointing to start this season than the Vikings. I, I just can't get over the craziness of the difference a year makes in the NFL. The Vikings were undefeated in one score games last year during the regular season. This year, including their playoff matchup against the Giants, they've now lost four straight one score games. But anyways, who you got in this one? It's in Carolina. Yeah, I'm taking Minneapolis. Uh, Bryce Young's strat- status is still uncertain, and Carolina just their offensive line is just still a problem. And look, Minnesota's defense isn't really that good. So I mean, at Carolina, it's sneaky. Actually, it could be a Thielen revenge game. I I just think it's got to be. This has got to be the week the Vikings get it right. But hey, Adam Thielen, by the way, has looked really sharp. So one of my boys for all you OG podcasters or podcast watchers. Thielen's been a guy, he's been a dog, so hopefully he keeps it going. Yeah, the Panthers are breaking in Bryce Young, but Young was hurt in week three, and Andy Dalton was forced to play. We'll see what their status is for this coming week. I think it's going to be Dalton, but the Panthers don't really look like a team that's going to match up super well with the offense the Vikings have. I think in order for the Panthers to win this game, even playing at home, they are going to need a big-time performance from either Bryce Young or Andy Dalton, and they're going to have to hope they can force a lot of mistakes from the Vikings offense. I, I you know, I'll, I'm still going to rock with the Vikings in this game and the combination of cousins and Jefferson. Uh, but I think this is really just going to come down to which team can make fewer mistakes. And I might be delusional, but I'm going with Minnesota in that case. All right, moving on the Steelers and the Texans. It was a great, great Sunday for both the Texans and the Steelers. Each of them got wins. Uh, a jolt of confidence for their young quarterbacks moving forward. But I think last week was all about the coming out party for CJ Stroud. Uh, I mean, he was outstanding uh, in Jacksonville in that upset. Houston gets to one and two early on in the season. They show some life in what could end up being a wide open AFC South, as we touched on earlier. Vegas is also liking the Texans a little bit in this one. They've only got Pittsburgh as three point favorites. Um, in these betting lines. The Steelers are another team that's hard to figure out offensively. Kenny Pickett can launch the ball, and he has playmakers, but he's also prone to some mistakes. Can D'Amico Ryans force him into mistakes? Do the Texans have any room for error here? I'm rolling with Houston at home. I think Stroud is just going to build off this performance, and it's going to help him throughout the rest of the year. And uh, even at home, it's not really a home game. I mean, Pittsburgh's going to take that stadium over, but even still, I'll go with Houston. I knew you were going to go Houston. Uh, yeah. I knew it. I know I don't span too well. Um, but yeah, I'm going Pittsburgh and here's why. Uh, I think this is a matchup that just h- helps Pittsburgh. Like their pass rush is where they bank on. Uh, Jacksonville is a team that doesn't bank on it. And uh, I think they're going to get to Stroud. He was my QB. I think he was your QB one too. But yeah, like Stroud, I was very high on. Uh, I talked with a lot of people over that. A lot of people were so curious. Why did I have you know, Stroud one and Bryce three. And uh, again, my thing was he could fit a lot of different NFL offenses. And you see a lot of different schemes that Houston runs. It's not just a set set of plays that they do. They run a lot of different formations, run a lot of different personnel groups with the receivers they have. And it's pretty effective. Um, But yeah, I I think Pittsburgh's going to exploit that just mainly because of the outside edge that TJ Watt will set. Look, TJ Watt is a great player. Like, don't get me wrong. He's a phenomenal player. And the way the reason why he is is because he wins one on one so consistently. Like you literally cannot block this man one on one. But the problem is they run a three four, and you have to block him one on one. You can only chip, so he benefits a lot from it. Um, but you know he's effective at it. So yeah, give me Pittsburgh here. All right, Raiders at Chargers. I mean the Raiders and Chargers have had some weird endings to almost all of their games so far this season. Of course the Raiders were blown out in week two, but aside from that. I mean, we've really seen these two teams play some torture football so far. Um, what do you got on this one? It's in LA, but more like it's in Las Vegas because it will be a Vegas home game. Yeah, so I picked uh, like the Chargers to win last week, and even I was pissed off. Like they got so bailed. Like, insane, like they got bailed with the pick that turned into a touchdown, right? First of all, obviously prayers to Mike Williams, but they got bailed, right? The the pick turned touchdown, and then dude, <laughs> the last play. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Um, yeah, but this is just a team that they're going to beat. Like LA is just more talented than the than the Raiders, who are who might even be worse situationally. Oh, I also did want to say this. I'm actually going to defend the Brandon Staley call. I know a lot of people hate on Brandon. I am included. Oh my God, here we go. I'm going analytics. No, I'm going to defend the call. I'm going to defend the call. Yes, I am an analytics guy, but I am going to defend the call. 
And because look, you're up four, right? And you get it, it's over. Like, you, like yes, the analytics 100% tell you to go for it on fourth and inches. You always take that. Um, and against a team with, you know, this type of personnel, your secondary is not good, right? Like, you take that. I would take that chance. The one where they ran against the Browns, fourth and two. No, I wouldn't do that. But fourth and inches, yes. I, I think your EPA substantially goes up when it's inches versus fourth and two. Yes, I will defend that call 100 times out of 100. Fourth and two on your own 28, like they did it versus the Browns. I, I, I said that last year. I don't defend. But fourth and inches, yes. Yes, I will defend it. Um, but yeah, give me the charge. Well, either way it goes, they didn't get it. Uh, and even without Mike Williams in the lineup, because of that season-ending injury, yep, prayers up for him. I think the Chargers come out swinging in this game and just build off the momentum they captured in beating the Vikings this past weekend. They really don't have a choice if they're going to keep any sort of pace with the Chiefs. It doesn't feel like the Raiders are really trending toward being competitive, truly competitive uh, in the AFC West this year, but we'll, ha- we'll have to wait and see. The odds makers are saying Chargers are six point favorites in this matchup. Damn. Sounds pretty reasonable, honestly. Um, and yeah, I'll also go with the Chargers here. New England and Dallas. Just when you thought you had the Cowboys figured out. Um, look, I I forgot to mention this in our Cowboys segment. The Cowboys had 13 penalties. Yeah. That kind of lack of discipline, that's not going to play well against a defense that's being coached by Bill Belichick. The Patriots are going to make it hard for you to play anything but, you know, a clean game and win. They may just be one and two this season. I know that doesn't seem daunting, but look, there are a couple of lucky bounces of the ball away from being three and oh. How about Ezekiel Elliott coming back to Dallas with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder? I mean, if this game, uh-huh. if it comes down to both teams having to play, you know, some small ball and letting this game get dominated by defense. I almost like the Patriots to pull off the road upset. Uh, Vegas isn't liking the Pats all that much. The Cowboys are seven-point favorites. But I would not be shocked if Dallas drops a second game in a row here. Right now, I'm going to put in New England. This could change. I genuinely see, like, this could happen. Like, they could beat Dallas. (laughs) Darn it, dude. Oh, this made this so much tougher because I thought you were going to go Dallas and I was like, okay, I can maybe sneak it in and in there because everything you said, I 100% agree with. I think we're on the exact same timing here. Yeah. Um, the only problem is that I do think as bad and undisciplined Dallas has been and even, you know, defensively, they're a little shaky. They're just such a good matchup for the Pats. Like, they're such a good matchup for them. Uh, and, like, it's real. It's going to be really hard to, like, screw that up. <laughs> Let me just put it to you that way. I think it's the best roster that, oh, no, they played Philly. I forgot. Like, they handle Philly well, right? And they handle Miami well. Like, like, look at the level of difficulty New England's had to play. They've played two undefeated teams, right? And now they're playing Dallas. So you're right. I think New England should be a sneaky pick here. And you know what? I'm going to go with them. Yeah, let's go. I'm going to back you up. Let's go. You're not always, I see, it feels like we always have that one pick that we both just knock in. So I don't I know. I, dude, the more I think about it, though, I, this could be one that changes, but like. I'll knock it know. in with you. Let's run it. I'll, I'll lock it in with you. Okay. Just, okay. Just, just on the record, I'm not locking it in. I'm just putting it in. The oh, okay. It'll, it'll be there. I may change it on Thursday. We'll see. Um, Cardinals, Niners. Uh, in my opinion, I think the Niners have the most well-constructed roster in the entire NFL right now. I mean, this team has just been so impressive through three weeks. Um, yeah, from top to bottom, incredible roster, very good starting QB on a rookie deal, playmakers all over the place, tremendous coaching, star after star after star. I mean, there is a stark contrast between what John Lynch and Cal Shanahan have going here and what Monty Ozenfort and Jonathan Gannon have going. Um, I mean, mm-hmm. I'll give I'll give Arizona their, their credit, right? They went out there against the Cowboys, played extremely hard, got an impressive victory, first one of the season. I will, I will eat crow. I'll admit that I didn't see any way that upset was happening, and the Cardinals made it happen. Jonathan Gannon has his guys playing hard, and he's doing a tremendous job scheming against opponents. Honestly, the Cardinals should at least be 2-1 and one at this point, if not better because obviously they've blown leads against both the Commanders and Giants. I think the Niners will flex a little bit in this game, though. I mean, they're just too good for most teams to hang with, so give me SF. 
This is going to be a massacre. All right, chill. This is going to be an absolute no. massacre. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? I mean, the Cardinals, who are on a high, are not going into SF. Are you kidding me? Who's on a 10-day buy? Are you serious? Dude, this is going to be – dude, this is – dude, this might – cause a war between a border war between California and Arizona. Like that is how bad this game is going to be. I mean, are you serious? Really? You're telling me the Cardinals who are super happy right now. They just, right. And as you said, they, they probably feeling, damn, man, we should be three and oh, like, yo, we could actually do some stuff. Dude, they're going to go into SF and they're going to get killed. <laughs> like this is going to be, I'm, I'm listening to Shree, give them credit. I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? I mean, like, this is just all, they're just going to be happy all for them to literally get 21 skunked in like the first quarter. And it's going to be that little Madden rating. Your opponent, you know, your opponent is too skilled for you. Do you want to leave the match? That's exactly what's going to happen here. SF by like a million, dude. Wake me up when they have to play a real team, which is Dallas week five, I guess. But yeah. You know, a simple, I'll take the Niners would have sufficed. <laughs> All right, let's move on to Sunday Night Football. Chiefs at Jets. No, let's just hope there's no border war between California and Arizona. Nah, yeah, that's never. You know, let's just hope. Yeah. You never know, dude. After this um, match. <laughs> all right, Chiefs at Jets. I mean, why is why does this have to be Sunday Night Football? I mean, this is this is good because I'll get time to do homework. But like, I mean, <laughs> it looks like the Chiefs are back on track. Um, Aaron Rodgers held the key to the Jets' hopes and dreams this season. And barring the unexpected, this looks like it will be their third loss of the season and third loss in a row. Vegas has the Chiefs as nine and a half point favorites on the road. And that's pretty significant when you consider the fact that the Jets actually have a really good defense. But the Chiefs are just too well-oiled of a machine for the Jets to hang with, you know, when they have Zach Wilson as their quarterback. Wilson barely looks like NFL caliber at this point. And the running game hasn't been doing the Jets any favors either. At least they didn't against the Patriots. Uh, Brees Hall and Dalvin Cook combined for 20 carries and 36 yards on the ground against Belichick's defense last week. So the Chiefs will be licking their chops against this team, both on offense and defense. Uh, give me the Chiefs by like two scores uh, for sure. Yeah, so I, we're going from one massacre on the West Coast to another massacre on the East Coast. Now, give me the Chiefs, but I'll, I'll say this. Um this is, I think this is the best defense Mahomes has had in his Chiefs career. So that's what's so scary yeah. about this. Uh, and I, I'm really hoping, look, Zach Wilson, I, I'm sure he's a great dude. I'm really just hoping for him to do so bad that they sign Carson Wentz. <laughs> I mean, today they just brought in Trevor Semyon. I know, that's what it's so mad. Like, why? You should have just waited. Like, why him? Dude, Carson Wentz 100% is better than that. So I'm really hoping that Zach does so bad that they're like, you know what? Let's sign another quarterback. <laughs> That's where I'm at. But yeah, KC for sure. All right. Monday Night Football, Seahawks at Giants. I'll let you start here. The Giants, um, I mean, the, the Seahawks, well, I'll start with the Giants. Three weeks of pretty miserable football overall. Absolutely whacked in week one against the Cowboys. They were down 28-7 against Arizona, and then they came back. And in week three, they just got smacked around against the Niners. Seahawks, Giants, who you got in New York? Tough. It's tough. It's tough. Um, because I really do think this is a game they could win. They have 11 days off, right? Yeah. I think this is contingent on Saquon playing uh, and, honestly, their O-line. But Seattle's also banged up, too. It's cross-country. Give me the Giants right now. Shocker, I know. Yeah, I mean, I, you never know. I Even playing at home, I think we'll see Seattle build on the second half they just put together against the Panthers and – you know, feed Kenneth Walker uh, to a win here in New York. So Vegas surprisingly likes the Giants in this one, uh, despite the sloppy play we've seen from New York so far this season. I think Seattle is going to be the far more disciplined team in this game, and I think they'll just find a way to pull it out. So go with the Seahawks, and that'll close out picks for week number four. Wasn't it out with a difference, dude? I think we yep. differ on three games, three games. Three yeah, games. but some, some of these are going to change for me. For I sure. already can tell. You, this man's already regretting his New England pick. I feel like I'll stay. I'm telling you, I'll stay with it. Like, nah, I don't even know if it's New England. It's uh, some of these other ones. I don't know. Like, even for Thursday night football, I might switch to Detroit. I don't know. Okay. 
All right, well, yeah, we gotta. We might need to make this man a little bit more sure with his pace. I'll be checking in on Sunday. And I'll see like four different teams. This man is. Whoa, probably... Joe. Okay, I changed one pick last week, and that was Cleveland. That's it. <laughs> okay, yeah. Let's 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 this man. This man does his research though during the week. I'll give him that. Yeah. But yeah, with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. Again, sorry for my voice. Hopefully, it's better next week. But um, yeah, we've been the Cold Our Truth NFL Podcast, and we will see you guys next time.